Is there a doctor in the house? Brother David, would you pray for us? Amen. Lord, we God, we say, Lord, again, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love, Lord God. You show us all the time, Lord God. And Father, we do pray for any others that are coming that you, you're going to give them uh, traveling mercies. Lord God, give them your safe and home, Lord. And Father, uh, we do pray for all the ones here that uh, have illnesses and afflictions, Lord, and others on the outside of the church that we pray for, Lord, that put your healing hand on them and Father, raise them up, Lord, and get them welled up. We're glad to see Sister Linda here tonight, Lord. You got her healed up and back in the house of the Lord, and, and that's a blessing, Lord God. And Father, I do pray, Lord God, and that uh, you'll protect all of us from the, all the other viruses and all the other mess that's on the outside, Lord, and not let it come upon us or upon our loved ones, Lord. And Father, we're here to hear from you tonight, Lord, and Father, I pray that you have the pastor anointed with the message you'd have us to have tonight, Lord. That, Father, that, uh, that Father, that we'll be attentive to the Word of God, and Father, we'll be we'll be ready to hear from you tonight, Lord. Help us and lift us up, Lord, and we'll thank you and praise you in the Lord Jesus Christ's name. We do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, pray for Brother Jim Bradshaw. He was supposed to have shoulder surgery yesterday morning, and uh, so he spent I don't know how many days going for pre-screening, doing all these tests, everything. And uh, they asked him if he had a COVID test. He said, no, I don't want one. They said, okay. So they went on with the, all the tests and everything. He showed up for surgery early in the morning. And they said, have you had your COVID test? He said, no. He said, we can't do the surgery. Never take a COVID test. So he no. said he was going back. Uh, <laughs> he can't go back. Because by the time he gets it, gets the surgery, there's a six-week healing process, and that'll throw his uh, tour boat off. So he's going to have to wait till the end of next season, Lord willing. So pray for him. And uh, huh? Frank, and I got a phone call today from somebody who went to homeschool conference in Oregon, and they have FEMA camps set up in Oregon with the razor wire, and if you test for COVID. They haul you off to a FEMA camp. Do not take a do not take a COVID test. Hmm. Uh, also, pray for uh, Kevin and and Petra. Kevin made his first trip. He's got to go back out uh, tomorrow to Florida and then back up and then to Colorado. But uh, she is at the Lexington Medical Center right now. And she'll probably be going somewhere else. But it's something that. My wife and I have discussed when we met her, and and so just pray for her. She needs uh, a lot of prayer right now. Amen. You know, the first thing of getting cured of anything, or you know, is realizing you have a problem. Amen. And so, need a lot of prayer for them. Um, I have a uh, friend, Ricky Collins, who works at the Hanson Quarry Sand Plant over there on Boy Scout, and uh, they're being quarantined. So his wife can't smell anything, and he's got about three kids, and they're all quarantined too. Man, John is on tonight. Huh? Johnny is on. Johnny's on. Yeah. We're gonna get rid of this Facebook unless you start showing up. <laughs> Better go to Gab TV because Facebook's gonna get rid of you. Yeah. Gab TV. That's Gab TV. Mm -hmm. Man. Gab is Gab is a social media platform owned by serious born-again Christian and Patriots. His name is Andrew Torba, and you can look him up. And he yeah, I read on it. He on every day and preaches, doesn't he? Mm. He does. Anyway, I've been looking at all this stuff coming through, and and, and since all this stuff happened, and, and uh, I'm looking at it, and there's some far right wingers out there that are opportunists and they're trying to gather followers and, and they put out a lot of false stuff just to get followers. You know I mean, so you have to be careful with the information you get. Amen. Yeah. You know and, uh, I chose to pray about it and ask the Lord to give me wisdom and knowledge and help me with it. Amen. All right. I'm going to read, uh, we got a missionary letter from, uh, the general. You remember brother Patton? He said, Dear praying friends, in these days of COVID-19, we were able to go to five churches 
and a private prison two times. We saw a total of three saved the first time and four saved the second time. Uh, the first time we were handing out cookies and toiletries. That would get them saved. And <laughs> am I joking? <laughs> For Christmas. They had to come out to the services to get the cookies, but the toiletries we handed out as gifts. This is reminding me of you. <laughs> The patient in the hospital prison were grateful for the gifts. We had to preach with our masks on, which was hard to do. We came back at the middle of the month holding services on every floor. We were able to see a lot of inmate patients come out to the services. Please pray that we will be able to go into the prisons again like we used to. Pray for our fellow laborers in the Lord during this hard time. Keep us in your prayers. Amen. So pray for him. I mean, that's a sincere man really trying to do something for the Lord. Amen. Uh, Brother Parson, like I said, to be here Sunday. I guess we're going to do uh, beef roast. And uh, what else? Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes uh, some kind of vegetable. Amen. Amen. Not the vegetable. Vegetable. <laughs> Okay. And this is from Miss Marilee Sykes, missionary in South Africa. For you that don't know her, her and her husband went over there. Let's see, they came through back in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, they went to Africa and her husband got killed on a bicycle back how many years ago has it been now? But she stayed there faithfully and she's still trying to keep everything going. She said, I know it's been a while since my last letter, but honestly, nothing much has been happening. We are still going out witnessing, giving out hundreds of tracts to a bunch of cold, dead people. So don't go to the morgue. Go to the street. Oh, that is the morgue. It's actually becoming a bit funny. Some of the responses I get from people have actually made me laugh. We have a track called How to Get to Heaven. Now I've gotten some pretty funny comments from people like, don't you have a booklet on how to get to Hawaii? I don't want to go to heaven. I want to go to Dubai. Do you have a book on how to get a wife? And oh, heaven, I don't think the taxi will take me there. <laughs> get an Uber. Yeah, get an Uber. <laughs> and then the other one is, I am in heaven right now. Meanwhile, meanwhile, they live in absolute poverty. After witnessing to a guy for a while, it ended with him saying, Jesus will come back after COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to catch COVID. <laughs> I read something the other day that said God said God to most people is a synthetic God. I really think that to these people today, that is what he has become. We went on a short holiday to the ocean. That's because Christians don't go to the beach. They go to the coast or the ocean. Amen. And it was a, so horrible for me. The place we stayed at was owned by a flaming queer and a Buddhist boyfriend. <laughs> the coffee shop close by us was run by a lesbian and the beach was packed full of drunks and perverts. The last thing that anyone wanted was, they must be Democrats. Were any of our, any of our house members on vacation that week? Amen. <laughs> The last thing that anyone wanted was for us to give them a track exposing their sinful condition. I did get a bit depressed, I must admit. It's like throwing a bucket of water on a forest fire. But I came home, and while studying my Bible, I came across this verse in Ezekiel 2.7. Thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. So then I said, okay, God, I will just keep telling them. As for our church... We've had my neighbors across from us coming faithfully for a few months now. Also, another neighbor from the area has been coming for almost a year now, and a new man from the flea market is coming. So it's not just the same old group of people. It's always nice to have new people come and end up staying. Well, I can understand that. Amen. Amen. Also, this time last year, we lost our song leader. A while before that, my daughter moved away, and she was our pianist. I understand the music program. 
We tried to keep on singing, but it just got too ridiculous to carry on. <laughs> Boy, we can relate to that, can't we? <laughs> we feel your pain. <laughs> so one day I just took down the hymnal board, took the keyboard out of the church, pushed the piano up against the wall, and packed away all the songbooks, and we just stopped the whole singing thing in our church. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have a Tim. Also, this time last year, we lost our song leader. A while before that, my daughter moved away and she was okay. It was a singing thing in our church. All right, I read that. I thought, this was it. We will never sing again in church. I was a bit heartbroken over it, like any normal Christian. I love to sing hymns in church. Singing hymns affects your heart towards God in such a huge way. It left me personally in such a sad state that I would cry when I heard of him. Then one day a lady who had been a member of our church for 25 years or so said that she had practiced a hymn that she would play the piano for church. She did, and it was wonderful. She did that about three times, then asked my, old, my other daughter, who used to play cello in school, if she would try and play the piano because she was getting very weak and sick and couldn't carry on. She actually has leukemia. So Heidi, who hadn't even looked at a cello in 14 years, decided to try. She did know a bit of piano because she took a few lessons to help with her cello playing. So anyway, she started learning hymns really easy and really quickly. It's actually like a miracle for us. Now we are singing hymns in church like a normal church again. We got any people who have been here 25 years know how to play. <laughs> I'm adding a picture of one faithful Mal Malawian member. Malawi. Oh, that's where I got the smoked termites that I ate. She wanted to take a picture with me just before we locked down because of COVID. So now you have a recent picture of me. I hope you all are safe and well. My family and I are doing very good over here. Thank you for all your support and prayers. Merrily Sykes, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Philippians 1.21. Amen. Amen. That's Mary Lee. She is Malawi or somewhere? She's in South Africa. Amen. So that's from two missionaries. I forgot what she said. Let's see what something there that she said. Oh, I know what it was. <coughs> I was on my way up north somewhere with a load of peaches. And uh, who was it? Warren Maples. He's dead now. And we were riding and we stopped at a rest area in Kentucky. And there was no building there. It's just a rest area. And if you needed to relieve yourself, you must find a big round tree. Amen. And they had some picnic tables sitting out there and there's a bunch of people standing up here. And so I headed towards the woods because I had to do something. So on my way there, I see these two guys coming across at me at an angle. So I get down there to the tree. And before I get ready, I look and I see one look out from behind the tree. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I turned around. I walked back up. Warren was coming from the truck. I said, you see them two guys? He said, yeah. I said, keep your eye on them. I'm going back down there. If they come, I'm going to shoot one of them. <laughs> so watch for me. So I go back down. They went over and sit down at the picnic table. So I come back up. They, I looked at them, and I asked them very bluntly if what they did was worth going to hell for. But I said it very bluntly. Everybody's looking. And they got like that, and I was preaching at them out of Romans chapter 1. And they said, we don't need preach that. We go to church. And I said, what do you go for, to pick out the hymns? And they went, the people started laughing, <laughs> turned around, and walked off. <laughs> Amen. It's about the only reason they'd be in church, right? Picking out hymns. <laughs> I'll take him and him and him. <laughs> Amen. Come on, Tim. <clears throat> oh my goodness. And him. 
Alright, good evening. Boy, alright, turn to page 126, what Rock of Ages. That's you just a stinker. Great story. Oh, please stand. 126. I was talking. <clears throat> Use the other way around. <laughs> thought about Brother Parson coming. I said, you know, every time he comes, we usually do spaghetti. Amen. That's because it's simple and you can do it fast, but you know, he, uh, I think he might try, I'd like to have some beef for a change. Amen. If he don't, I know Teresa will. Amen. <laughs> well, I thank the Lord for his goodness. <laughs> had a case of tomatoes and peppers and onions and I made tomato sauce the other day but me and the girls went out there and we canned 12 quarts and out of that case and my uh, my knowledge of canning is not that great and I I saw canning salt so I've Sprinkled it in there. <laughs> now it tastes like lemon juice. <laughs> so what I did, I said, well, we'll just take a can, one, one of the ones that I made and one of the ones that's Miss Prego or whoever made and we'll mix it, but we're not wasting it. Hey, Amen. And then I did Dale's favorite. I ground up a Boston butt and made Italian sausage. Hey, Amen. Vacuum sealed it. I want to live off the land. That's what I want to do. <laughs> hey, man. Ah. Well, you can turn to Matthew in chapter 4. Matthew in chapter 4. Amen. 
Well, good evening, uh, Facebook, for however long we'll be here. Keep preaching, brother. Maybe somebody there will get saved. Yeah. <laughs> Preach hard while you can. We were... Uh, I'll be on here as long as God wants me on here. As long as I don't do anything stupid like flaming faggot or something. Amen. I didn't say that. She said it. I read it. Amen. I would never talk like that. Right, Miss Randall? <laughs> don't look at me when you say that. I didn't say it. <laughs> no, not you, Miss Sykes. Okay. Well, you and Jackman can get up there and do a routine. That would really get them going. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You're like, I'm black, yep. I was in the shed doing the canning and I uh, had stuff cooking and stuff in the oven and, and everything. So it was time to do the broadcast. So we just did it from the shed. Amen. In a uniform like you. Yeah. And uh, I said, I'm a cooking show out there. I said, I'm, I'm hid away in an underground bunker in an undisclosed location. <laughs> Got my guns loaded. Picked up, showed them my shortwave radio. Command. Told them I had my tank outside. It was all fueled up. <laughs> and your sister believed you and she came the next morning. Huh? Your sister believed you and she came the next morning. Oh, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Pray for us there, Brother Steve. Please. Pray, tell me, Father, Lord, we just thank you that, Lord, we're all going to be able to come out here tonight, Lord, and Lord, uh, worship you in spirit and truth, Lord. And I just pray now that uh, we get into the preaching hour, Lord God, that uh, you open our hearts and our minds, Lord, and uh, give us what you'd have us have in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, seriously, all joking aside, I don't believe that every every effeminate person or sodomite, whatever you want to call them is, I don't think they're all unreachable. Amen. But I believe there's some that's been turned over to a reprobate mind. Amen. But, uh, we need to pray for them because they, a lot of them, they were, uh, molested when they were very young and they grew up and they thought that they were made that way. Amen. Uh, from things they had blocked out of their mind and, so we need to pray for them. There's folks out there because in that list, it wasn't only sodomites in that list. It was fornicators and whoremongers and everything else. Amen. The fearful. So uh, we need to pray for them. But anyway, uh, looking at the news in the last week and listening to everything, it can get very depressing. Amen. And so I just quit looking at it. Amen. And Wisdom. I realized this, and I said it the other night, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Amen. And God's allowed it for whatever reason. He knows best. We're told to love our enemies and to pray for them, and them that despitefully use you and bless them and curse not. Uh, when Daniel was in captivity down in Babylon, he prayed for the king. And you know what? Old Nebuchadnezzar got saved. He had to eat some grass for a few years, but he got saved. Amen. And uh, you think about Nehemiah. He was the king's uh, taste tester. Amen. How would you like to have that job? Mm. Sit there and take a drink of the wine or take a bite of food. Wait for a few minutes to see if he falls over dead. If he doesn't, you can, he can, king can eat. Amen. I'd be saying, hang on, king, I need to test that one more time. <laughs> Amen. <Yep. laughs> but uh, all these men that were in captivity, they still showed reverence to their captives. Amen. Now, that's a hard thing to do if you're not saved. That's a hard thing to do. And it's a hard thing for me. But I'm trying to convince myself that I'm saved, so I've, got, <laughs> so I've got to do it. But it is. It's hard to pray for your enemies sometime. Amen? Pastor, uh, Jesus helped the Romans, and they nailed him to the cross. That's right. 
And it, it's a Christian has a different set of rules, a real Christian. I'm not talking about religious people. I'm talking about real Christians. Amen. Uh, I don't like what's happened any more than anybody else. I really don't. Um, I look at these Democrats, amen, amen, and they've got the very nature of the devil. If you read in the Bible where Satan fell and things that he did, he opened not the house of his prisoners. He, I mean, uh, they made accusations that were uh, significantly false, and yet they believed it. Uh, I mean, in Matthew chapter 4 here, when Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil... The devil saying, if thou be the son of God, he knew he was the son of God, but yet he said, if thou be. And years ago, I got in an argument with a person that was close to me. I must not have been as close to them as, as they were to me. <laughs> but anyway, they were going on accusing me of all kinds of things. They've been. Yeah. <laughs> I made it. We made it. I know it's off. Oh no, it's coats on fire. I, I oh, <laughs> it's my bad. My bad. My bad. Good evening. Good evening. So, uh, anyway, we're into this heated discussion, and they're throwing all kind of accusations at me, and I, I, I start answering them back, and I'm looking at them, and I, all of a sudden, I, I, I was praying at the same time, and I, and all of a sudden. The Lord hit me with this. He really believes what he's saying to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this thing come across my mind, you can't argue with a devil. Mm -hmm. And after that, I got this peace about me. And I'd have no more problem with it because I realized in their mind what they were saying, they absolutely 110% believed what they were saying. And there was no amount of my arguing back with them that was going to convince them otherwise. So I, I know who hope knows the truth. And I said, Lord, I'm just leaving it with you. Amen. And I look at these Democrats today saying how awful Trump was. That he was dangerous for the country, yet you see what he's done for the country. I mean, how can you be that blind? But they, their hatred for him is so great that they can't see past that. And so what they're saying, they really believe. Not going to change them. So I thought about this verse here. It says, chapter 4 of Matthew, verse 1, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had four, fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's right. And by the way, how can you do that if you don't have the word of God? Right. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. Now look at this. He's going to quote scripture. The devil's going to quote scripture to the Lord. That's right. And he says, For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Well, was that true or not? Yeah. The devil used the scripture. Mm -hmm. So did the Democrats. And the Republicans. And he says, And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So he answered him with scripture. Rightly divided. And again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. He said, What audacity? No, it was his to give. He got it by conquest in the garden when he defeated Adam and Eve. When he got him to take the 
fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He got the world back. It was his originally. He lost it. God recreated, put Adam and Eve on there, told them to go replenish the earth. <clears throat> Devil comes along, gets the woman to take the fruit. She gives to her husband and him trying to be a type of Christ in the sense that he's given himself for her. And the devil got it back. Does not the Bible say that he's the God of this world? Amen. Does he not say that he's the prince and power of the air? Amen. It was his to offer up. He hadn't won yet. But like Sir Lancelot Andrews said, God took the hook of his divinity, his deity, the golden hook of his divinity, hid it within the worm of his humanity and cast it out. And that old serpent, that old devil, Leviathan, took it and it stuck in his jaw and tore him soul. And right then, the Lord won back for us. Amen. He took the bait. For if the princes of this world had known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. He said, if thou wilt fall down and worship me, then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. What's the Bible say? Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw an eye unto God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Now, America has played religion too long. When 9-11 hit, everybody's praying, oh God, and they're running to church. As soon as the threat was over, they're right back out there doing again. The churches are empty. People don't care. They have a, they have religion, but they don't have salvation. There's a difference. You see, when a person gets born again and Christ comes to live within them and they get filled with the spirit of God, then they want to obey the book. I don't like everything in this book. You understand that? But I do love the Lord. When I first got saved, I looked at some of this stuff and I said, Lord, I don't like that. <laughs> I said, nevertheless, though, really for my sake, but I said, for thy sake, I'm going to obey it. I'm going to give this up and I'm going to give that up. I was running the road, I running California and Canada and down toward Mexican border. And I, I mean, I, I love trucking, but I had to give it up if I was going to do anything for the Lord. Some of you heard me tell this before, but I was coming down Interstate 95. I had the biggest truck I ever had. It was my baby. Double sleeper cab over Kenworth. I mean, it was beautiful to me. Finally worked my way up, got in the big rig. And I was coming down 95 outside of Florence, South Carolina, on my way to Plant City, Florida. And the uh, Lord was dealing with me. And I started praying. And I said, Lord, I can't just quit and serve you. I got, I've got a truck payment. I said, I'd have to get rid of this truck before I could do anything. Daylight in the morning, I was at the fuel pump and at the uh, fuel stop at the farmer's market in uh, Plant City, Florida. And this white Oldsmobile pulled up with a blue, still see it with a blue uh, vinyl top. And the guy gets out and he's putting fuel, diesel fuel in his truck, in his car. I'm fueling up. He looks over at me. Hey, you want to sell that? I said, Lord, I mean, not today. <laughs> Back then, I'd have a cell phone. I said, I told the guy, I said, well, my wife's been wanting me to get off the road. And I just praying coming down the road that night. And he didn't care nothing about praying. And uh, I said, I tell you what, here's my phone number. You give me yours. I said, I'll be home in a couple weeks. I said, I'll give you a call. I called home that evening to my wife. And my wife said, Frank, somebody wants to buy your truck. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, Linda. 
<laughs> what did I do? I sold it. She came down. You came down and picked me up. Drove down and picked me up. Amen. <laughs> He's like that. Care for what you ask for. Amen. <laughs> then I would keep falling back. So we had a few more trucks and Warren Maples was driving the one that's sitting over at the shop now that we bought back. And uh, he got down to Tampa, Florida and he threw a rod through the block. I'm sitting here about broke. Got three trucks lined up right here where the church is sitting. And uh, I said, what am I going to do? So... I had $200, and I got in the truck. I, bought, I borrowed a big bend, hook it to the fifth wheel, and I headed for Tampa to tow the truck back. And uh, I got to Jacksonville, the scales, and the guy pulled me in there, wanted to see my logbook. My what? <laughs> He's fixing to write me a ticket. Because you're free. Huh? Because you're free. So... He's a big black fella, nice guy, and I gave him a gospel track. He says, is that you? I said, yeah, that's me. <laughs> he said, uh, he's writing tickets. He says, what's this going to run? I think it was about $200 fine or go to jail. And I told him, I said, listen, I got a truck blowed up sitting in Tampa, Florida. I said, I got this one to go down. I'm having problems with it. I got $200 in my pocket. For fuel. I said, if I give you the money for the fine, then I can't go anywhere. And I'll be broke. So if I go to jail, at least I'll still have the money in my pocket. He looked at that and he looked at me. He says, get out of here. <laughs> I walked over to my truck, opened the door, climbed up in there, and Lester Roloff was preaching. If God called you to build a church... Then go build the church. <laughs> yeah, getting a message. But I've messed up a few times like that, and that's why we're not any further along than we are. But anyway, back to these to this shape that America's in. You can be turning to Philippians chapter three. I started praying about it and I said, Lord. We know they're crooked. And nobody really is going to get together and go out armed and take the country back. They're just not going to do it. Like I said before, I read the rise and fall of the Third Reich. Saw how Hitler got into power and everything there. And I just said, Lord, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. <laughs> And it's getting close. Other people are realizing it. So our main job right now is to try to get people that we love and care about, family and friends, neighbors, and get them to the Lord. And as someone said the other day, get our neighbors together and try to work together because they don't like us. They're going to come after us. But the Lord is the one that's in control. And if God be for us, who can be what? Against us. against us. But if we do it wrong and God be against us, who can be for us? We better make sure we're on the right side of the word of God. Now, I'm ready to get out of here yesterday. But the thing is, I've got some lost folks and friends and relatives that wouldn't be going. So what I need to do is get my life where it's supposed to be to please the Lord so I can have power with God in prayer and win some souls. In Philippians chapter 3, you know, Paul been through some rough things. You know, he's beaten, prison, drowned. But you know, or tried to drown, he's in the deep. And... uh he ended up in the third heaven. He said, whether in the spirit or out of spirit, he couldn't tell. 
But he said he'd rather be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But he said, it's more needful for me to be here. You imagine getting a glimpse of heaven and have to come back here. But I tell you what, it gave him strength to go on. He didn't have an easy time. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials. As though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Amen. Paul went through some hard times. Why should we expect any less? The Lord went through some hard times. Could you imagine? He came to his own. His own received him up. His own rejected him. Gentiles were rejecting him. The Romans rejected him. And when he was going to the cross, God had to reject him because he had become sin. That's why he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? For you, for me. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We need power back in our lives. And you only get it when you're in the word. This labor here in the Old Testament tabernacle is the picture of Jesus Christ in type. The royal colors of the, of the gate, it's only one way in. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The white linen fencing around here set in sockets of silver is the pictures of the blood of redemption and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. First thing you come to is the brazen altar where he was offered up in type as a burnt sacrifice when he suffered in hell, Psalm 116, Psalm 16. But the Christian, for us in type, it's us coming through here. We had to come through Christ. We repented, received the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Then we get over here to this brazen labor. In that brazen labor was water to wash your feet. That's a picture of the Word of God in Ephesians chapter 5, by the washing of the water by the Word. So after you get saved, you can either wander around out here like the Israelites did in the wilderness and be miserable. You can get washed up and go into fellowship. So we look at what's going on now. And I said, Lord, you've never let me down yet. I've let you down many times, but you've never let me down. And I'm sort of kind of enjoying this now. Now, I hate what they're doing to our president. Everybody jumping overboard with, you know, like a bunch of rats on a sinking ship. Mm -hmm. They want to destroy the man. They don't just want him out of office. They want to destroy him. Yeah. Yeah. They want to destroy him financially. And his children and his grandchildren. But you know what? We were talking the other day that Maybe the whole reason that God put President Trump in for these four years was to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and to move the embassy. Because all these other presidents said they were going to do it and they never did. Now he did. And you know what? That has to happen before the Antichrist shows up. Amen. So maybe his whole purpose there. And you think the devil's happy about that? And they got to have a false sense of peace in the Middle East before the Lord comes. The Antichrist is supposed to be a man of peace, they say. And they'll be saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. So, we ought to be rejoicing. Amen. We ought to be excited and happy. The end's coming. We're getting out of here. Hey, I'll tell you. I lost a few pounds. See, my buttons ain't about to hit you in the head. <laughs> there you go, Frank. 
And, and I'm asking the Lord to help me with that. Because when the trumpet sounds, I won't be able to take off. <laughs> We're going to practice, you know, get your legs ready. <laughs> What'd you say? A no-fly zone? No. Fly list. no. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the, in the spirit <clears throat> and rejoice in Christ Jesus. And have no confidence in the flesh. <coughs> Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteous, which is of the, in the law, blameless. <clears throat> but what things were gained in me, those I count it lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the ex excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. And look what Paul says, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb. That I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of, of Christ. And by the way, that's why I said Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Hardest lesson I ever had to learn was that for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves is the gift of God that it was not my faith. It was the faith of Christ. The one that said he would walk again in the land of the living. The righteous, the faith of Christ, the righteous which is of God by faith. Now look at verse 10. It's one of my favorite verses. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth in those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, we're going to have to forget about some of the things in the past that's behind us. But just because we're trusting the Lord doesn't mean we should stop working to try to get some decent leaders back in the office. We just know what they're doing now, and we just have to work harder and pray harder. Amen? I didn't say give up on your country. I said, work harder and trust God. I press toward the mark of the, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything, you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an ensample. And notice the word ensample. Not example. Why? What is the difference of an sample compared to example? One is a living example. So that's why it's called an ensample. Amen? For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. In chapter 4, therefore, sometimes when you see that therefore, you need to go see why it's therefore. Amen. And that's what we did. That's why we went back to chapter 3. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, long for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eudeus and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, 
Help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. And here's the verse I want to leave you with tonight. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, you remember the story of Daniel's three friends? They refused to bow down. You remember them? Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. <laughs> or a bad Negro. <laughs> Amen. You remember him? <laughs> they had perfect peace when they were thrown in the fire. That's right. You know why? Because they were careful for nothing. But that everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Think about the martyrs and what they went through. I, I'm going to try to look up the one that, his name was John something, but the people told him, they said, when they were going to burn him at the stake, they said, if it be tolerable, let us know. And while the flames were burning him, his flesh was melting. He was yelling out, it's tolerable, it's tolerable. Not too many people understand that kind of power that God can give you. But you have to fully trust in him. You have to be on the right side of the Bible, the right side of God. And what's the worst that could happen? We die. Amen. It's like getting on a bus mm -hmm. to go to Washington. <laughs> You're stepping out of this life into the next. Amen. Amen. We've got nothing to be sad about. Whether you realize it or not, the battle's already been won and we win. You got to look at it as winners. So don't be depressed. Get excited. Just think. Wait till Adam Schiff meets the Lord. <laughs> You think he's got bug eyes now. Wait till later. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's all I have tonight. Bless your heart. Don't forget. Bless your heart. You raised her. Huh? You raised her. She's my right hand man. <laughs> Dismiss us there, Brother Tom. Praise the Lord, Father. Thank you again for this. Lord, thank you for loving kindness, mercy, and grace. Thank you for your word, the peace we can have in you, and the joy, Lord, that we should have, Lord. And I just pray for Brother Tom and Brother Ben. Lord, that they would be able to be here tonight. Lord, I pray for them. Lord, that you would be with them. Lord, that you would be with them. Lord, that you would be with them.